It is a windy day and we got a stormy car with the Golf R facelift. So this Volkswagen Golf is the newest version of the facelifted range. We've presented you a lot of different versions so far. This one here now, the new top model, 310 horsepower and the manual shift version or the DSG is available. DSG is the fastest one, even a little bit faster than the Ford Focus RS to 100 kilometers. But we are today focusing on the manual drive to get the maximum performance. Well, not time-wise, but fun-wise. So exterior, interior and the driving performance on the racetrack with the new Golf R. That is on Auto Gefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Taking German prizes as a reference, you can get a normal Golf at 18,000 euros, but this one here, 40,000 at least manual drive. Then when you put DSG, for example, in it, or go for the, for the variant, for the estate version, easily 45,000 euros and plus, and then some extra. So it is really the most expensive Golf there is. But on the other hand, you also get a lot for it. So full LED headlights, now with the facelift updated, here you get it standard in the Golf R, then the R batch and really strong lower bumper. You can see it here to get more air flow in here, bigger air intakes. So really an aggressive appearance, but the Golf R is also still about understatement. Other hot hatches, they come out more forward. You know, for example, uh, Honda Civic Type R or also the Ford, Ford Focus RS, they're even more aggressive. So this one here, probably the you know, most conservative, but at the same time, most elegant hot hatch in this segment. Four meters 26 or 14 foot is the total length of this compact vehicle. There's also the variant available, the estate version or combi, as we say in Germany. And that is just a little bit longer than. We will show you an in-depth review of the variant then later this year. Today we are focusing on the hatch version as this one is also available worldwide. Will also come in the updated version to the US. Then 18 inch rims come standard with the Golf R. Those ones here optional 19 inch and we also have this uh, semi slicks right here, the um, Michelin tires. They are good for the race track performance but don't get semi slicks for the normal road use as they might be tricky when it gets, gets wet. R batch then contrasting side panels here for the side mirrors. That's a very beautiful contrast to me. Also, you know, it's not really Thomas blue color, but it is still a blue color. More goes, you know, into a, into a darker tone, but I still love it. It's a great Golf R color, makes it look very spectacular. And then the dropping line just below the door handles and you see nicely the play of light and shadow right here. Also the black contrast with the side bumper at the lower part. Again, the sportiness of the car is stressed. And then the big C pillar of the Golf as we usually see it. And the taillights already begin right here at the side. The rear, pretty elegant, but still sporty. Also with the Golf R, stronger in the lower part here with the big diffuser. And then this one is also optionally equipped with the performance pack. And this one features 
a massive Akrapovich exhaust, four pipes there, and this delivers even more sound for the Golf R. You do not have to get it, but this is, you know, if you want to even more evoke some attention. So, what do we have here? The so, 2 liter TSI for the Golf R here now with 310 horsepower, so 10 horsepower more. Doesn't make too much of a difference, a little bit more newton meters of torque. And then with the new 7 speed DSG, so jumping from 6 to 7 speed DSG, 4.6 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour now. And that's a little bit faster than the Ford Focus RS, which is at 4.7 seconds. With the manual drive, then just something around 5 seconds. Still fast, but the DSG is definitely faster. And another advantage of the DSG, you can have, as initially shown, also this very brutal launch control. That's one, the one you heard at the very front of the video. So launch control only possible with the DSG. With this one here, with the manual drive, you just do it on your own. You have to have a little bit more racing skills then. Volkswagen Golf R key, at least we have a small R logo to make it a little bit more exciting. Then solid door closing sound as we expect and then the R trim is really about sportiness so we got dark covers right here and everything pretty solid from the build quality as we're used to it from the Golf. Also a lot of room here on the inside of the doors, so that's quite nice. And then entry caps was ambient light and those are the sport seats that come standard with the Golf R. Really nice with fabric on the inside and then Alcantara on the inside of the side parts to you know have even more grip for example when we are driving a little bit faster. So just great stick with those ones and they are just fine. Then the Volkswagen Golf R steering wheel here with the logo flattened bottom and white contour stitches on the inside and you already can see the digital instruments. More details to that they come standard with the Golf R. For the GTI you can still choose analog and digital. Here always the digital gauges. Let's get inside and the good thing about a sports car that is based on a compact class car it's still relatively comfortable. So pure sports cars are often not that comfortable and here you got the normal Golf seating position. Okay the suspension is a little bit lower the sports suspension but everything else in that, you have the usual headroom here, a moment is 86 or 6 foot 1. And you can also adjust it here with the steering wheel pretty easily. And manual seat we got here, but that's also perfectly fine because the functions here like pump it up your all working pretty fine. So a good position for racetrack, yes, but also just for the everyday driving. And that is, you know, the most part about this car for sure. Cockpit overview, you see the Golf is always a little bit lead from the middle console towards the driver. Then those design highlights here, dark again for the racing style. It's funny by the way, if you uh, slide over them, it's a really strange feeling. I think it creates some, you know, electricity or magnetic field. Very funny, because obviously from the different surface. And also here, the softened dashboard a little bit. The only thing I don't like with the Golf, We've seen different with the Leon Culpa. They have a different uh, setup here because here in the Golf, they use this combination here. So the upper part is a piece and the lower part is a piece. In the Leon, we have a horizontal piece and then the other one is attached right there and goes in one straight. So um, I don't like this gap here, but obviously they decide to do it like this somewhere. You have to you know, put two pieces together. 
6.2 inch comes from standard with the Golf, then the higher trim versions, GTE, E-Golf, GTI and stuff, Golf R come with 8 inch, that would be like this. And then this one, the optional new 9.2 inch with the gesture control, which is no matter how you want to put it, sometimes working, sometimes not, I don't know, I wouldn't use it. But everything else, soon more details to that. And the digital gauges more in the details there soon as well. The steering wheel has this progressive action that you don't have to turn it too much. You will see it on the racetrack driving, very interesting. And standard climate unit right there. Then you either have the DSG shifting lever, 7 speed, or here the 6 speed manual now. And of course, for motion, then with the all wheel drive. And the analog gauges are gone, digital gauges right here. And you can put GPS information on the inside, but also a lap timer here, special for the Golf R, for example. So let's, shall we use it on the race track? <laughs> special for the Golf R are the driving modes. You can also have a race mode, but it more changes stuff for the DSG, that the, the gears are turned up higher, shifting later, and then also shifting down earlier again. Other than that, the infotainment system, it feels very good. It looks so fancy, really great. Great resolution, but then again collects so many fingerprints. Telephone connection either via Bluetooth or via cable, then it's the app connect for the mirroring functions for your smartphone. The GPS, it looks like this, loads pretty fast. You see what a great reaction time for such a good resolution. Again, on Majorca here today, one of my favorite islands. So beautiful landscape. 50, well, Maybe here, I'm not sure if 50 is allowed here. Here we can go unlimited speed for sure on this very race track. And also the DIN audio system can be um, specced with this car. It's really good. I've experienced it also in the Volkswagen Tiguan. So I can really recommend you that if you are a music lover. One very nice detail is the frameless mirror with all golf in the facelift now. It looks, you no. Know, elegant but sporty at the same time and I think you can even better look through there if you don't have the, the thick frame around it. So let's get inside and the Golf R is you know as versatile or not versatile as any other Golf and pretty standard result here for the rear part for headroom on Mermaid 86 or 6 foot 1 and also knee room so pretty well usable of course the variant is even better but then the difference is not necessarily here in the rear. If you have the estate version or the combi, then there's just more trunk left. So for the rear passengers, it's pretty much even. And what is always great that we have the same combination here from Coloss and Alcantara, also for the rear seats, also Isofix covers, so for child seats, and we can flip the seats from here, two third, one third split, also top tether right there. And the best way to do it from here, you cannot flip um, the seats from the trunk that easily if you have the trunk cover mounted. Oh, some tires screaming in the background. That's a race trip. So especially when you have a Golf R with the Akrapovic optional exhaust, then you go to the rear, hey, hey, I got the big <laughs> exhaust there. And then you open the trunk and see good versatile dimensions here for a compact car. Also can use a ski hatch right there, just push it through or reach over the top here and have the two-third bench split. Also, the audio system or replacement tire can be fitted right there. So guys, let's go with uh, driving and of course heute, uh, today, heute, today in German, <laughs> is the racetrack feature and Let's go to the race mode, even if we're not with the DSG, because then we have also the progressive steering, even more adjusted to that one. Everything, also the exhaust, option exhaust here, and they really hammer this car on the race right now with the manual gearbox. You know, I'm a DSG fan in general, but a lot of you guys said, hey Thomas, can you do the manual version, please? And of course, I always love to fulfill your wishes, and therefore we have the manual today. And one thing, you know, that is especially done with, um, for example, uh, motorcycle driving, um, quite often you do not really use so many gears. You, you 
for example, uh, think about motocross, supercross driving, sometimes they ride the entire track with a second gear. And you know, that's not necessarily the case here. But of course, for example, second and third gear can be used quite often. And then fourth gear sometimes, because this is here a very tight track on Majorca. And sometimes, really, the lower gears are enough. So you see this progressive steering, look how, how well the control is. So I can leave my hands in the steering wheel quite often. Uh, even here I could have stayed in second gear, maybe here second gear, uh, third gear, second gear is better here in the tight corner, accelerating out. Nice sound here. Yeah, there third gear was a bit better. So now back to second, over the curbs. Wow, a lot of fun with the all-wheel drive. You don't feel this, this understeering from the front wheels that you might have when you have so much power just with the front wheels. That can happen, of course. There, the rear-wheel drive is that is additionally applied, it's really better. So much G-force applied here as well. Really pushing this car here now. <laughs> the sport suspension of course helps us to get this car under control. So with 130 in this third gear, there's no problem for the car at all. Now hard on the brakes, second gear. Hope you're enjoying that today with me here. So here the Golf R is really an additional feature if you always compare it to the GTI for example. Of course in GTI just have the power on the front wheels. Of course we have more a little bit more weight here due to all-wheel drive, but it's good grip and you can get more power to the ground basically. Literally letting the tires scream right here. Now again, right close over the curbs, like second gear. Really the best thing is this progressive steering, as you can see it right here, open steering again, accelerating. Because with the progressive steering you can really have so much control over the car, you don't have to steer a lot. It's good for racy driving, but it's also good in everyday driving to have progressive steering. You can see it right here, 90 degree corner and also means 90 degree the steering wheel. slide out with this car in the rear, it's hardly even possible. So you see on some of those shots, you can force it, but you really have to force the issue, otherwise it will not really work. Just by you know, hammering the throttle when accelerating out, it won't work. You really have to go sideways to the other direction first. So really stable rear axle here for the Golf R. So much good control over this car. Of course, with the all right, seen it, it was really hard on the brakes, and there the <laughs> the belt was really holding me tight. Well, even though those tires are pretty worn out now, meanwhile, still have great grip on the racetrack. So I think a good performance from the Golf R here.
there the rear even came around a little bit. Maybe you heard and seen that. So, now we're rolling out steadily. What do you think guys? I hope you enjoyed this racetrack feature here today with the Golf R. And tell me in, in the comments, would you prefer the manual drive or the DSG? Of course, I would have had even a better performance here with the GSC, DSG on the racetrack. A really professional race driver will be better with the manual because it is lighter again. Um, so, here we go then. But you know, if you're not really a professional race driver, then the DSG will score better results. As sometimes, you know, maybe you, you miss a manual shifting point or something like that. And, um, you know, then it really makes sense to do a good go for that. Um, DSG also easier to drive because you can keep both hands at the steering wheel. You know, sometimes you get in situations where you feel, ah, I just have to go from third to second gear back or fourth again. Then the DSG can really help you also with the shifting levers if you have um, in the manual mode. Here you have to reach with one hand to the, to the gear lever. But on the other hand, it's more challenging. So I think you've seen also from our racetrack part here, we had a more challenging ride. Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> we had a more challenging ride, definitely, because, you know, it stresses you a little bit more, challenges you with the manual shifting and so, and this makes it a little bit more exciting. It's not as perfect as with the DSG, but probably more exciting, a little bit more extreme than with the manual shifting. And I think not that extreme, but a little bit accounts also for the everyday riding of this vehicle then. Um, Basically, you know, it's a little bit more extreme, more challenging than with the manual drive. However, faster again, also on paper, as for the acceleration, surely with the DSG, especially with the load control. So really looking forward to the discussion there. And um, as for road driving, we'll pick the Golf R variant there um, in, at a later stage of this year, and then have the estate version and also the road driving test. So in front of us, by the way, the Golf R, our pace car for today, um, with a famous race driver who also scored the very hot lap with this car by the way, in Kukuma Yellow. So that was the riding, riding part. So, okay, I couldn't resist. I had to take it for another spin with the DSG. So let's listen to the DSG farts and Let's check if I'm really faster with the DSG, if I'm more relaxed, if I can push the boundaries even further. Let's check it out. Oh, do you hear this? This is so-called DSG fart. When shifting, the car is burning some additional fuel, just a little bit. To get this very effect then. And especially in the tight corners, what is really helping me, first of all, I can keep my hands at the steering wheel all the time. And I don't have to concentrate on shifting at all. It's all done for me and in the sport mode, also ESC sport, so the stability control is drawn back a little bit. And that helps me to keep the line better. So I'm also way more relaxed than, for example, reaching out to the shifting lever sometimes. And the sound is even better, I think, from the exhaust. Almost now harden the brakes and look at this progressive steering. It even comes more into effect now when you're with the DSG. I can really don't have to steer too much, that's so helpful on the racetrack. But again, it is a feature that also helps you in everyday driving life. Those additional performance brakes we have, those ones are the most important for the racetrack, by the way. 
just gain a few seconds per lap just due to the additional braking system but of course for the road drive you wouldn't need the performance pack then with the additional brakes and you will just find with the normal brakes so much fun and yeah I mean with the manual drive it was more extreme to drive for sure but to me this is here more fun because I can more concentrate really on driving the perfect line don't have to concentrate on shifting and I can drive really more smoothly and that is more fun to me so I'm faster and smoothly smoother at the same time so I would definitely go for the ESG on the race circuit and both also in driving life normally. Wow. I mean, it's not initially a pure sports car, it is a hot hatch. And look how far we can push the boundaries with this car. And the rear axle is really so stable. We are burning some tire on the ground, I can tell you. I hope you're enjoying this with me. Also, nice braking lights, LED brake lights. We see in the Kokuma yellow color. In front of me. As soon as we're finished, we're going to talk to Benny Leuchter, who is driving in front of us. Of course, he holds the record lap for the Club Sport S, the GTI Club Sport S, on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. He will, can also tell us the race driver perspective then about manual all wheel drive, front wheel drive, automatic, and stuff. If you take a look at it on camera, how we do those racetrack laps, on camera it looks always slower than it actually is because you don't feel the g-force. But I can tell you, we are so fast on the way at the moment, I'm really being pushed into the seats, into the sides, but they have good performance on the sides, you know, hope we're really tight. But I can tell you, we have a lot of g-force applied and we can also see it in the performance monitor. 1.1 g, for example, to the left we had in that corner now. Wow. That's not a really good. Daumen hoch. That's not a really good thing. 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 And there he is, Benny Leuchter is the expert for the Volkswagen Golf when it comes to really moving it around the race track because he holds the record lap on the Nürburgring Nordschleife for the Volkswagen Golf Club Sport S, for the GTI Club Sport S. And today we are also talking about the Golf R and you just told me, hey, it was a pretty fast ride and how, does, how can you move this car so fastly around the track, although it's just based on a compact car? Yeah, of course. Uh, the new updates on the on the Golf R uh, it was a big improvement for us. Um, what you can see is the brake the, from the performance pack. The brakes are really awesome, um, especially on the on the racing track. You have a good pedal feeling in the brakes. I mean, the brakes, uh, the initial bite of the brakes is quite good, and all little things uh, make a big ball. And um, yeah, at least you have a lot of fun with this car on the racing track. So the Akrapovich exhaust, performance pack, three and a half thousand euros just for the exhaust. And you might say, you know, it's just, you know, for the visual part maybe, but does it really make a difference for the race driver? Yes, of course. I mean, um, as a racing driver, you always like to hear the noise of the car. And um, especially with these nice exhaust pipes, um, yeah, there is an, a quite nice sound. Um, in combination with the DSG, it's really beautiful, especially, for example, if you put on uh, lounge control as well. So we talk about DSG versus manual a lot of times. What is it about a racing driver's perspective? Which one would you go for? Maybe also in a private life and on the racetrack, manual or DSG? 
In the private life I prefer the DSG uh, gearbox of course because it's quite comfortable you don't need to always change your gears you can just yeah keep, keep concentrating on, on driving and it's quite comfortable even in summer or in winter uh, you don't need to think about which gear I have to put in now so all this stuff the gearbox make uh, make for you and of course um, what, what else I can say is in, in private life the thing is that the gearbox really change uh, the gears quite fast um, so this is a really big advantage especially if you want to go from 0 to 100 uh, this is a big uh, step forward compared to the manual gearbox um, of course the launch control is a big improvement on this car now on this update updated car um, you are 0 0.5 seconds faster from 0 to 100 um, with with the DSG gearbox so I would prefer DSG gearbox in a manual uh, compared to manual in normal life um, but on racing track I'm I mean I'm a racing driver I always like to put in that gear I would like to put in and therefore I yeah of course the weight is also um, um, yeah how to say a good good point for the manual gearbox so if I would go on racing track I would prefer the manual gearbox of course and then you also have a lot of experience with the front-wheel drive car, with the GTI, GTI Performance, GTI Club Sport S and so on. How can you compare it to the Golf R? What's the main difference in riding the front-wheel drive and the all-wheel drive car? Just to remember the Haldex, the all-wheel drive system, sets maximum 50% of torque to the rear. And how does it play an effect on the racetrack? It really depends on which track uh, you are going on to. So, for example, on this beautiful racetrack here in Mallorca, uh, I would uh, always prefer an all-wheel driven car because you have many hairpins where you need a lot of traction out of the corners, slow corners with a lot of powerful car. So, therefore, uh, all-wheel drive is perfect. You always have traction ex except what, what weather you have. For example, here on sunny weather, it's always good. But, for example, if it starts to rain, like on the Nürburgring often, uh, then I would prefer the all-wheel drive because you have always traction out of the corners. It's very smooth, very easy to drive. So on this point, uh, I would say the all-wheel drive is a, uh, has a big advantage compared to the front-wheel driven car. Um, depends what you want to do. So if you want to do a fast lap and you need a lightweight car, then I would prefer the front-wheel driven car compared to the all-wheel driven car. Because if you can save around about 100 kilo this is a big step on the timing loop so you need a much more you you would need much more horsepower in the all wheel driven car compared to the uh, front wheel driven car to get this uh, weight effect uh, like equal so would you say that um, in dry conditions on the Nordschleife you could score a faster lap with the club sport s front wheel drive only than with the golf r with all wheel drive but on the wet Nordschleife you would be faster with the golf r Yes, of course, I would say that, yeah. It uh, always depends uh, on the size of the corners. So, um, like a Nürburgring Nordschleife, where you have fast corners, slow corners, and you have a wet track, then I would prefer the all-wheel driven car. Because, as I said before, you always have traction. So, thank you so much for this insight. And, of course, I mean, for uh, private customers, if they're not used to you know, saving weight for 50, 100 kilograms, you probably will also be faster with the all-wheel drive. And, of course, handy than in snowy conditions and stuff. But, of course, the Golf R is always more expensive. Thanks so much for the insight and we we'll see you at the next event. Maybe, you know, with the Club Spot S or something like that. We'll see. Cross the fingers. See you later. Bye bye. So the top of the range car with the Golf R with the facelift version, now a little bit more crisp even at the front. Interior, new infotainment system and summer horsepower. Well, you don't feel the performance difference that much. But you know, with the DSG in combination, it's even 0.1 seconds faster now than the Ford Focus RS. So, I mean, why not? You go for the DSG when you want to keep your hands at the steering wheel all the time. You want to have the maximum performance and control. And with a manual drive, when you're really a manual shifting fan, as we have presented to you here today, because quite often we had it in the DSG version, so I thought, why not going for a manual here today now? So definitely such a fun car, also with the all-wheel drive, because when you have so much power on the front wheels, the GTI is you know a little bit limited there already. So already above 200 horsepower, it makes sense basically to have also the all-wheel drive to get all of the performance. It's a little bit different with wheel driven cars. They can have more performance also just where the rear axle has just something to do that the car is leaning backwards 
when accelerating so the front wheels get light but here with the Golf R no problem so maximum traction it's not really a car to get it sideways we've shown you that it is possible when you really force the issue but usually this one here sticks to the ground all the time I want to hear your opinion on the Golf R exterior interior and driving was pretty flawless this car is everything about being flawless indeed your comments there and of course see you next time at our very next episode